Open your mouth. Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. What up, what up? You already know where it is. Your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard. Today we got Box in the building. Straight out of Yonkers. Not your regular white boy. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, let's get right to it, man. Dog in the Yard. Box. What up, what up? You already know where it is. Your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard. And today we got Box in the building. What's up, Box? Yeah, yeah. Straight from Yonkers? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, pretty much. Born and raised there? Not born there. I'm born in Manhattan. Okay. And then uh, I moved to Georgia for like two years. And then we came back up to Yonkers when I was three years old. Wow. Yeah. So you've been in Yonkers, in Yonkers for real. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wild. Yeah, you wild. Oh, it's a fishing man. tissue. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what's going on, man? Man, I, you know, I know that you, you, you got, you know, you was getting in trouble at an early age, you know, and, and, you know, you, you did a little bears here and there. You know what I mean? Anything that you could, you know, you could share with us, it'd be great. You know what I mean? For, for the audience, for the listeners, especially the youth. Yeah. Uh, growing up, I never knew what drugs were, but I knew what drugs were. Never seen it. I know about it. So I wasn't the one that was infatuated with, yo, he got a nice car. He got this. He got that. None of it infatuated me like that. I needed school clothes. I got an old brother. So I remember like it was yesterday. I was delivering groceries. I made $18. And like I said, I just wanted to chill. Mm -hmm. Get some Oreos, some milk, and watch the honeymoons that night. Right. I go home. I floss on my brother. Like, yo, look. I show him the whole $18. He goes underneath the bag. It's a shoebox. He went to about five, $6,000. I was like, get the fuck out of here. He was like, yo, me and listen. That's my man, my OG. Listen, he was like, man, listen, you made this last night. I was like, yo, I need some school clothes. He put a pack in my hand. It was a Reynolds. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go now. 100 bottles, $5 a pop. You're going to be able to make 500 and go get your school clothes. All right. I'm familiar with the streets. I sell my first pack. First time I made a sale, real talk. Whatever that shit did to that fiend, it did the same thing to me. I was high. Free money. That's what I thought. I was getting money. I made the money. I told my brother, yo, take me to go get more. When my brother had to go re-up, he took me downtown. Mm -hmm. Met up with the Dominicans. 145th and Broadway. The McDonald's right there. Uh -huh. I was right there. What Jay-Z talked about in mm -hmm. New York, New York. I made deals I made in there, and I'm 12. I'm 12 now. Mm. So, my brother introduced me to this dude, whatever. Who's your parents and all that through this time? Right? My parents, my parents were there, but my mother was an addict. Okay. So I had the green light, basically. I did yeah, what I you, want. Yeah, you ain't had no, you ain't had no, you know, no. just nothing to freak, no, no and, discipline. Right. My stepfather, he was more of an enabler. He wasn't disciplinary when it came to the crack game. When I was younger, he used to fuck me up. I was little. Right. He used to beat me and shit. Mm -hmm. But once I hit the street, I'm feeling a little, little way. Like, yo, yeah. you ain't gonna talk to me right. like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm 12, 13. Things change, you know? Yeah, you on the street doing it, stuff. Like I said, I was thrust into the shit. I didn't idolize looking up to nobody, none of that. Right. My brother was like, here's 100 bottles. You're going to make $500. Once I did that, we went and got more. And I was rolling on my own man. Yeah. It went from, it was like my stepfather would come in the room. And uh, it went from me asking him for a dollar or two. The next week, him asking me for 300 Swear to God. Right. So the tables have turned. And I'm feeling, feeling a certain way. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm making money. Yeah. The situation with my mom was I was stuck in a position because like my, my younger sister, 
I was 16 at this time. But imagine being... Imagine being 16. They give you mother drugs so your sister can have groceries. That's where I was at. I didn't know it then. But as you grow, as I look back, <clears throat> I was giving my mom drugs so my sister could eat. Mm. It's a fucked up place to be. Yeah, fuck the position. Fuck the position. I mean, for a young, for a young, for a young kid, young teenage, you right. know, to be in that exact kind of situation, you know, it's it's it's, it's um it's, it's not it's not healthy. Right. It's embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, after when a while, you're a kid, you know, I mean, like, you ain't got no better. You ain't got really nobody putting up on you telling my yo, this is how the way you gotta do it. This that. Right. Like other ways. Right. I was a I was a man like at 13 mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah. I was a man at 13, you yeah. know? You had no other choice. I, you had to go fast. Right. And I was all about getting that money, to be honest with you. Like, my mom, she was there, but she wasn't there. Like, that's why I went to my right. grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. but I, when, when we were younger, I would always go to my grandmother's house. My first friend that I ever met in Yonkers, besides my family, we came from Georgia. My stepfather convinced my mother to move up here to the Yonkers. My first friend I ever met was Styles P. Wow. Styles P. Like family. That's crazy. Besides my real family, my, my, my stepfather's family, yeah. my stepfather had 18 brothers and sisters. Wow. So imagine how many cousins I had in the streets. Okay? Where do you want to go? Slow bomb? I got family there. School Street? I got family there. Walbert? I got family there. Whitney Young, I got family there. Those are all projects. Mofa Gardens, I got family there. All in Yonkers. All in Yonkers. I never had to join a gang. Yonkers wasn't about gangs anyway. Right. But I had a whole army behind me. You understand? I had a whole army. Where you want to go? I had beef with one kid. He went back. I put the beats on him. I ain't going to say his name. But he came to the block. The projects. No, I, I lived on Lawrence Street in Bruce Avenue. Oh, okay, that's no project. He was Lock. from the projects. Okay. He came over there and was trying to speak up for his cousin. Mm. And I was like, yo, he's real comfortable. I'm going to have to fuck him up. I put the beats on him one-on-one. -on -one. I know how to fight. Like we, That's why they call me Pops. Yeah. I can shoot the one. I got all that. He went back and told them across town... <laughs> We jumped him. Wow. He brought the projects back with him. My cousin was right there. Our cousin came. I was like, yo, man, what's up? He was like, nah. He said, y'all jumped him. I'm just going to, if he wanted, I'm going to make sure that you get a one-on-one -on -one box. I said, anybody jump. And they were all on him. Like, yo, what the fuck you bring us over here for? He ain't jump you. And Jermaine said, I'm like, yo, that's my family. Mm -hmm. They call him Pit Man. Jermaine, right. but that's my cousin. Right. Like I said, I, I never was worried. I never, I moved out. I wanted to move in Yonkers, to be honest with you, because I, I was living on Harriet. But when my mother ended up getting her own apartment on the south side, south side of Yonkers, you understand? Mm -hmm. I was on the north side of Yonkers. Okay. So I'm going, to, <clears throat> I'm going to school and everything on the south side, but on the weekends, I'm young. I'm going back to Harriet. And Groshan. So I still got the, the ties with the people over there. Yeah, you've been on both sides, man. Uh, right. So I, I move you. on both sides. You know what I'm saying? I go to the park. I don't know if they had that in the Bronx. The summer, free lunch in the park. Yeah. Okay, back in the days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to go to Serato Park, yeah. have the free lunches. You know what I'm saying? And then Sunday, I go right back to my mom's house. So when you on, started getting the trouble that you, were, that you got locked up? I got locked up when uh, I got locked up my first time when I was 13. They called me with five cracks on me in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And uh, they couldn't do nothing. I got right out. Next day, I'm out. Everything was the next day. I think my mother came to the central jail, wherever it was, down on 
uh, picked you up. Alexander Street and came and got me. Yeah, because you yeah. were a minor. I was a minor. So it was like, oh, they can't even do nothing to me. Yeah. My mom could come get me. Okay. So that was the first time I got locked up. But they told me, when you get 16, we're going to get you. That's all they kept telling me. They come through the block in their non car singing happy birthday to me. They couldn't wait for my birthday to come. My birthday came. But this is when I'm like 13. But they waited. When I turned 16, October 28th. They raided my house October 31st. Happy Halloween. Wow. They came and got me. But I'll show you something. In that time period, in that time period, we're talking about when I'm 13 to 60. I got three three years to go run in me. I tell this dude up in Yonkers what my situation is about reading up. So he introduced me to his cousin. His name was Little. He was on 131st and Broadway. There's a big, tall building that's still there, but across the street was Florida, okay. a restaurant. Right. So my man from Yonkers. Yeah. Yeah. Florida. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, the restaurant there. So little kid, when, when, when I meet him, he's a little dude. I'm about 13, 14, and I'm bigger than him. But he's big time. <laughs> I don't know that, yo. Right. He's big time. So I'm dealing with him for like maybe a year or so. Police come in, undercovers come in while me and him are making transaction. They don't know me. They know him. We're sitting down on stools. So he's right next to the register. Then me. So he was like, yo, police just walked in, yo. He said, the bag is dirty. I said, all right. So I'll tell you what. Get up and walk out. Leave the bag here. And I'll meet you in KB Cons on 145th, the, the clothing store. So where? I said, all right, listen, just meet me at McDonald's. Leave the bag, meet me at McDonald's on 145th. Mm -hmm. He says, all right, we got up, police grabbed him, start harassing him. I put the bag on my back, backpack. Mm -hmm. I walk out, they let me escape. I go up to 145th, mm -hmm. about 20 minutes, whatever, I go to the payphone. I beat them. He comes up to McDonald's, 145th. Two bricks in the bag. I didn't even know. Next time I read up with him, he had six ounces on me, for me, on some good, good looking out shit. I appreciate what you did for, you, for me. That's for you. Six ounces. Didn't take my read up money or nothing. Okay. He was like, yo, good looking. Boom. Gave me that. And from early on, I was like, yo, if you write and you don't do no sucker shit, good things that happen to you in this game. You know, honestly, it's a shitty game, but if you do the right thing, right things are going to happen back to you. He didn't have to give me those six ounces. So you was in the game. I was in the game. That, now I'm up. Yeah. So so how long you was in the game before you got, got in the trouble, got locked up? Uh, It was 12 is when I started. Mind you, I got out in 94 because I had two females pregnant at the same time. And I'm like, my life ain't going nowhere. From 12, I'm 19 at the time. So imagine from nine, from 12 to 19, 20, you're in the game. I don't remember early on in my life life. So yeah. majority of my growing up years, I'm yeah. in the life. Right. I'm hustling. So I got out the game when I had two, two females pregnant. And I was like, yeah, I got to do something. Like, but you, uh, so, so like the whole time, you never, you never got locked up? Yeah. Skid bids. Yeah, like yeah, so third, okay. Like, yeah, how was those? Okay, those were I mean your experience. You my my experience, I all you right. Know, going through the they, what? They, what one day I come outside, I was going to the Budweiser Superfest. I'll never forget that. I was going to the Budweiser Superfest that night. You remember that back in the day? No, Keith no, Sweat, no. Johnny Gill, all, LL wow. Cool J, all okay. of them. They had the Budweiser Superfest. Mayweather's promoter. Okay. Al Heyman used to throw it. Okay. So I was going there that night and I had put the cracks in the wall. They see me. They're coming down the street. They, they got me right-handed. I'm putting the cracks in the wall. They're in the car looking right at me. They know me. Gets out the car. They say, box. 
Put your hands on the car. I act like I put my hands on the car. I take off. I run to my man's house where I'm living. They don't see me go in, but they tell them I'm in there. Now, I give the shit to my man. I'm like, yo, flush it. Hide me. He flushes it. He hides me. This is crazy. He has an illegal apartment that he moved in. His, his grandmother's boyfriend made an illegal apartment downstairs. It was like a maze. A maze. The police can't get in it. They could get in it, but they can't find their way around it because it's a fucking maze. <laughs> so, right, it's crazy. It's an illegal apartment. Yeah. And it was a three-bedroom plus a living room, a, a bedroom way in the back. So he takes me and takes me downstairs. I've never even been down here. And I'm living with him. I've never been down there. Mm. He puts me behind a boiler. Now they're saying that I'm not there. Police in the, in the crib. I'm standing by, I'm, I'm hiding, sitting down behind the boiler. Mm. They come in. It took them about maybe a half hour. They come in, they come with the flashlights. I come out from behind the boiler. They see me with the cracks. So they ask me, like, where's the cracks at? They got me in handcuffs. I said, I don't have no crack. Where's the crack? I don't have no crack. Then my man's mom comes downstairs. They got her in the dope scene. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. Her arms are in the air. So I'm like, damn, I didn't mean to do this to this woman. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at my man because he's sitting down. He, he's sitting down. Mm. And I gave it to him. He flushed it, but I can't tell him I gave him the cracks. I can't tell the police I gave it to him. Yeah. I said, I never had any cracks. I never had any cracks because there was none in the wall. I took the pack with me. Right. So what you saw and what you could prove is two different things. Mm -hmm. He flushed it. When police go by him, <laughs> they smack him in the back of the head. Pete. Pow! He falls over the chair. Underneath the seat, cushion, he put his pistol. So now he gets the gun rack. They got me with the crack rack. Mm -hmm. So we ended up all going to Valhalla. They didn't do anything to his mom. But me and him went to Valhalla together. Mm -hmm. They put me in D-block. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When it was all said and done, I was going back and forth to court. He ended up getting five years probation. He copped out to the gun. And I copped out to the... Uh, Drugs. The drugs, yeah, and they gave me 90 days. And I just was like, yo, this shit ain't for me. And you did 90 days? I did, I did the 90 days in Valhalla, yeah. Yeah, and you uh, was like, fuck that, I ain't, I ain't with all this. I'm not with all this shit, like. All that jail yeah. shit, fuck all that. Right, the shit, shit was, uh. What year was this? Not for me. This is 93. Okay. I say that to say, I'm out of it. I don't want no more to do with it. I go to. Madison Square Garden, me and my other man. We go to Madison Square Garden to get job application to become ushers. Mm. I come back from downtown. I'm up on top of the hill. I see the narc cars in front of my mother's house. Mm -hmm. I call my mother. I said, Ma, police outside in front of your house. They came upstairs. She said, they looking for you. I said, wow. I almost got to see on indictment. That's the only way they come and look for me. That's how they do it in Yonkers. They let you sell drugs. They give you a seal indictment. You get indicted, and then they get the warrant. They come look for you. So the dude that I was doing business with at this time in Yonkers, me and him, we weren't partners, but we were mad cool. Right. He'd been to shop camp already, and he was like, yo, if you got an indictment, if I got one, I know I'm getting five years. I already been to shop. Yeah. But he got to connect OT. <laughs> His people in NC, North Carolina. So he's like, yo, I can't, I can't go back to jail. I'm not doing five. I'm not doing five. So I said, yo, how much money you got? He said, you got a couple of hundred dollars. Mm. I got a couple of thousand dollars. Whatever it was, I know we ended up getting like three O's. We get on the Greyhound. I take them down there. I'm gonna use my complexion for the connection. I ain't gonna hold you. If I don't talk, you don't know what I'm about. You just see the white face. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I was using that to my benefit. I was right. like, yo, let's go to your people's and we can pump it down there. I need to get some money just to get a lawyer. He was like, all right, we, uh, I'm back and forth from North Carolina. We get up to a key and a half. That's how much we putting back in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I ended up getting a lawyer uh, for, for this case. Uh, they had a big fight on Orange Street. 
and there was like 50 dudes out there. And everybody, they throw me on the fucking wall. You, all up against the wall. The warrant comes back from the ceiling, bang it. But I'm not really sweating it because I got the bread for the, the lawyer. I got yeah. the lawyer. Right. So they said, I, I uh, sold the undercover cop. They gave me the ceiling, bang on that. And what ended up coming out of that was I cop to possession. Mm. They gave me another 90 days. Well, I was like, yeah. This shit is uh, over with now. Now now I'm definitely not coming back to jail. And it wasn't beef. Like no, I wasn't terrified or, or scared or yeah. nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like I knew everybody. Well, mostly well, everybody. You just didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be there. And people know you by your car before they know you in Yonkers. Mm-hmm. So I don't have the Suzuki Samurai. I don't have the BM. Like they know. And my right. brother had the Milano, Alfa Romeo. While everybody right. was getting the foreigns, he was getting the Italians. Right. Everybody had the BM or the, or the Benz. Yeah, yeah. My brother had the Alpha. Right. And they they knew him like, oh, yes, white Chris. They mm-hmm. call him Milk. Right. He get money on that side. You know what I'm saying? So they know the car. Right. They might not know me. Because when I was in jail, it was like, yo, your brother got the Milano, right? Yeah, my brother got the Milano. You box, right? right. Yeah. You related to the Fox? Because that's my family's last name. Right. So I was like, yeah. So uh, I thought I was going to be done with jail then. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything criminally to right. go back to jail. I got two two females pregnant. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm, I'm going to come out of this, all right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I got, she became my wife. I got my wife the apartment in the Bronx. I did the right thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I did the 90 days, and she came every visit. Every visit she came. Loyalty out the, you know what? I appreciated that. Then I go to Georgia. My mother gets sick. My mother had moved to Georgia. So, so, so you, you did the 90 days? And I came. did the 90 days and came and home. you had your kids? She was pregnant. Both of them were pregnant. And Still. Then, then you came home. You went away. I, came, I came home. I, I went to the Bronx. 187 in Cortona. Then your mom got sick, bro. My mom's turned her life around. She ended up going to Georgia. She took my sister with her. And uh, she had called me. I'm going to show you how things work, honestly. I'll never forget this. She goes to Georgia to turn her life around. And she calls me. I'm good money. I'm working. I got a job. The whole shit. I'm good money. She calls me. She's like, hey, Box, uh, I want to tell you something. I was like, what's up? She's like, you sitting down? I was like, no, nah, I'll sit down. She was like, your grandmother passed away. When she says your grandmother passed away, I'm thinking her mother, because she went down south to clean up her life, and her mom lived down there. Mm. So I was like empathetic with her. I was like, Mom, I'm sorry to hear that your mom passed away. She was like, no, not my mother. (laughs) Johnny's mother. My stepfather's mother. And that's the only woman that really showed me any love mm. that I felt from a little kid. Wow. And I just remember dropping the phone, shaking. I don't, I'm not related to her, but if it was my blood grandmother, I didn't even care. Sorry to hear that. But when it came to my stepfather's mother, who loved me and raised me, I mean, I remember her saying, like, listen, if you separate in whites and colors in this house, you better be doing laundry. She would tell her kids that. Mm. Never made me feel uncomfortable. Remember, she had 18 kids. I got over 50 cousins at that time. Right now, if we count, I guarantee I got over 200. Guarantee right now. I got family I don't even know in my family. Mm. But when I got the news that my stepfather's grandmother died, I mean, his mother died, my grandmother, yeah. that shit broke me. Yeah. That shit broke me. So he, she told me that, and that shit hurt me. I'm getting emotional now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go to the wake. They tell me when the wake was. I go to the wake. I see my father. My stepfather. He's my father. Yeah. I see my brother. Uh, I see all my cousins. Like my cousin Jermaine Pittman. They brought him from the prison. He he came to see my grandmother in handcuffs. Like, I guarantee you the folks have the biggest family in Alcas. Guarantee, no questions asked. The, the the funeral thing with all the cars, I never seen nothing like this. Wow. 
I swear to God, Lucille Housing is her name. Mm. Love her to death. Loved her to death. Mm. Like I said, she was the first one that ever made me feel love. Mm. My mother was there. It was like cliche of your mom, I love you. But this lady showed that shit to me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? She was there. Right. The, for you and all the whole church was full. Everybody was there. We come out of the church. <laughs> this is the funny shit. We come out of the church. DMX is over there. Bless you, X. He's on the corner. So I see him. I'm like, what's up, X? Yo, kick it. He's like, yo. Hey, yo, dog. Sorry to hear about your grandma. You know? Like, he's always like that, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the shit, the shit just made me laugh. Like, it broke. I was sad, but when I was like, hey, yo, dog. That shit just made me, the shit just made me crack up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it almost like brought me to reality and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then he's just still in the corner talking to my cousin Joe, little Joe. And my ex were real, real tight. Mm -hmm. And he was telling him how, you know, sorry for our loss and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And he was living in Arizona at the time. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to come to Yonkers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I believe he came to Yonkers because he heard my grandmother died. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're a big family, man. You know that. Big family. Man. Big family. You know, I know you ain't quite sure, you know, everybody in y'all, they, they just know y'all. Right, right. Yeah. When I was younger, when I was little, they were like, don't fuck with him. He's related to the Fox. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So I was able to move. How so, Bob, after that, you, after that, you know, you told yourself, yo, I ain't never going to go back right. to jail. Correct. Jail is not it. This is not that what I'm going to do with my life. Right. And what you then, mean? Yeah. What ended up happening is, when I'm in Georgia, I'm down there with my blood family, my biologic family, mm -hmm. my uncle and my grandmother and my mother. But my mother was sick. That's why I moved down there. Mm -hmm. My mother got sick. I gave her my jobs to make sure I'm by her side. Whatever happens. My uncle and my grandmother, they be on some racist shit, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. They, they ain't like my mother because she married a black man. Mm -hmm. And you felt the energy. My uncle had the nerve to tell me, oh, listen, uh, I want you to come to Thanksgiving but I'm not going to invite your mother. I was like, yo, where did they do that at? Where did they do that at? That's your sister. You're going to invite me to your Thanksgiving table, but you ain't going to invite my mother? Who's your sister? You can keep that invite. You keep that invite. That was the energy that they had to us, my mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother tells me it was a Monday night football game. Atlanta Falcons was playing. Michael Vick was down there. So that was my favorite player. That's how I remember Pete. Right. So my mother's like, listen, Box, I got a life insurance policy. Don't let these motherfuckers get it. It's for you and your sister and your brother. Okay? Don't let them get it. Mm. The next day, this is Monday night, Tuesday, my mother falls out. My younger sister finds her in the bathroom on the floor. Knocked out. Calls the ambulance. Take it to the hospital. She wasn't responsive. Like she was incoherent. She was alive, but out of it. Yeah. So we all went to the bedside or whatever. My brother came the following day. My older brother came the following day. And my mother, like, I guess waited for him to come. And she passed away, like, maybe an hour. My brother arrived. Hour oh, later, she passed. Following day, th this was a uh, Monday. She fell out to Wednesday. She passed away. Thursday morning, my grandmother and my uncles in my mother's house. They've never been in my mother's house in maybe five years. They might have went two times. My grandmother and my uncles in my mother's house savaged everything. Looked like they robbed the fucking joint. Everything turned over. Every drawer. Everything. These scavengers come looking for this life insurance policy. So my mother was telling me, like, listen, if anything happens to me, take your sister back to New York with your box. I said, okay. I take, I tell my sister, listen, mommy wants you to come back to New York with me. After everything was done and she passed, I told yeah. her, mommy wants you to come back to Jersey. I was living in Jersey. She, I said, mommy wants you to come back to Jersey with me. And uh, she didn't want to come. She wanted to stay with her friends. She wanted to graduate down in Georgia. Mm -hmm. I said, is that what you want? Because I'm trying to do what mommy wanted. And she was like, no, nah, that's what I want. I said, okay. Well, I'm going back up top. I'm going up 
back home because yeah. I'm not making any money down here. Yeah. I get a call from my sister and she was like, Box, this is months later. Box, I, I got a letter. Grandma got the insurance policy. I seen it. I said, you seen it? She was like, yeah. You sure? She was like, yeah. I said, all right. I got to think of a way to get what's ours. You know what I'm saying? I said, Destiny, give me a minute. I need to think about what I'm going to do to get it back. So I hit my man up, my co-defendant. I told him, I said, yo, listen, my mom passed away. I need you to do something. And he was like, what's up? I said, I need you to impersonate the IRS. Because my uncle and my grandmother, my uncle had a truck washing business, mostly cash. Right. So he cheated on his taxes crazy. And I, t- I told my friend, I need you to just impersonate the IRS and we'll get this break. And uh, I'll break you off. He was like, I'm in. For our schedules to line up, it took like three months. I let my sister know what was going to happen so she's not scared. I wasn't trying to scare my sister. Right. I just wanted to get back what was rightfully ours. Yeah. So my man goes, we drive to Georgia, whatever. My man knocks on the door, tells him he's the IRS. He got the slacks, the blazer, walkie-talkie, mm-hmm. no gun, none of that. And he just tells her, gives her information that she already knows she's guilty of. And she just said, okay, I'll take you to the bank. And I'll get you all the stolen proceeds. We went to the bank. I followed him. What he did was he called me on my sister's phone, telling me, yeah, this is agent such and such. I'm taking such and such to the bank to receive the monies. And I was like, okay. The phone call was unnecessary. He didn't need to do that. But he did that. They go to the bank. She can't get the money out unless my uncle's there. They both have to sign. So we weren't able to get the money. My, ne- my, my boy just took her back to the house. And when my uncle gets wind of it, he said, that's not the IRS. <laughs> Somebody tried to rob us. Mm. They call the police. And because FBI was, me- IRS was mentioned, I'm sorry. It's a federal case now. Now I got a federal beef. They're interrogating my sister. My sister calls me and tells me, Box, they know. Uh, Uncle Mike said that this was an inside job. He called the police, and now the FBI is here. And they were interrogating my sister. Mm -hmm. They thought my sister had something to do with it because of that phone call. They traced it. I did this in, my mother passed away in 05. I did this in 06. They locked me up in 09. It was Excuse me. It was a three-year stretch that they were investigating me. Mm. So I'm working, doing whatever I need to do. And uh, they come and get me and my man. Same time in 2009. February 18th, i never forget that either. And uh, they lock us up. They gave me a $150,000 bail. And uh, I'm thinking I'm in some shit. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the fuck the prosecutor said, but he needs to do my resume. What you because this? this was 2000, when they locked me up, it was 2009. Because okay. I did all what, two, I, I did 10, and I came home in 11. What happened with the case was uh, I ended up taking a plea. But I thought, I was like, damn, they're going to give me like five years for this shit. If they, get, if they offer me the five, I'm going to take it. Mm. Uh, I called my younger brother because my younger brother was living in Georgia. I was like, yo, I got a couple of dollars. I need a lawyer. He told me he don't even know that he don't know a good lawyer. So I go online, I, I find one in Athens, Georgia. I tell him the situation. He wants 10 bands. I got you. I give him the 10 bands. Uh I'm working it out with my boss. Like, I'm not concerned about doing the time, Pete. I'm concerned about losing what I got. Like, I got a job, I got this house, I got mortgage, I got responsibilities. That's what I'm really, yeah. like, on the fence about. Yeah. The time I could do. Right. So, um, I ended up getting this lawyer, and he ends up calling me one day. He was like, listen, uh, they want to offer you 12 months. 12 months? I take it. Let me get it. And he was like, okay. My job was already set up. My boss was going to hire me back once I did my situation. Well, yeah, that Be- right. I ended up getting that covered. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told my boy, 
uh, I said, listen, my job is good money. He was a teacher. I said, listen, they wanted cooperation. I said, you ain't snitching. Tell them what they already know. Tell them what they know. They already know. They got the phone. They got my sister. They interviewed everybody. Just tell them what they know. I'm not going to look at you like a fucking snitch. You ain't snitch on me. I'm telling you to do it mm. so you can get your job back. Maybe you get probation. Yeah. Maybe. They gave him five months for his cooperation. They gave me 12 months. And I didn't know about the feds. I didn't know about the feds. I gave this dude 10, 10 racks. When he said 12 months, I, I jumped on that. But if he would have got me 12 months in a day, I only would have did 10 months. So at sentencing, at, you're my lawyer. You're supposed to look out for me. Yeah. I'm getting sentenced. And he's, the judge says, all right, uh, you agree to the 12 months, yada, yada, yada. I said, yeah. I moved to my lawyer. I said, listen, ask him for uh, a year and a day. He says, Your Honor, I have an unusual request. The judge says, just like this, let me guess. He wants a year and a day. My lawyer says, yeah. Denied. 12 months it is. And got me the 12 months. And when we went outside, I was red. I said, yo, you know this. You talked to the prosecutor. You could have told me, yo, I'm going to get you the year and the day. I got to find this out on my own. So I was ready to sentence him. Because mm. I felt like I wasted 10000 I ain't going to hold you. I felt like, yo, he railroaded me. I think it was because I was a Yankee. Because that's how they always addressed me as a Yankee, even when I was living down there. Mm. Oh, you a Yankee. You a Yankee because I'm from up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's why he didn't look out for my best interest. Yeah, yeah. Now, I get sentenced. I'm self-surrendered. They, they tell me to go to Manchester, Kentucky to camp. All right. I got time to do this. So I'm setting shit up. I'm making sure everything is in order with my personal shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I straighten all that out. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to go to Kentucky. I'll let them take me. I just turned myself into my supervised supervision officer. Mm -hmm. So I turn myself up to, to him. He takes me to Bergen County for a night. Mm -hmm. Next morning, <laughs> they bring me to Brooklyn. Um, what's this shit over there? MDC. MDC, right. I'm the one, the big ass warehouse yeah, in yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in, in Brooklyn. Right, all right. So I'm in MDC. That's the first time I ever was concerned about being locked up because the shit is like a fishbowl where I was at. It was a fishbowl, half wall and half glass. So you could see. I don't know where you, where you at. If you was there, then maybe you're familiar with what I'm saying. When you walk in, I was in the dorm. Yeah, it was dorm. Okay, I walk in and it's like a glass bowl I felt. And I just, it was me and like three or four other dudes. And you're just on your own. 120 dudes in there just staring you down like if you fool. So how do you feel about that? Well, I already know. I'm not in the gang. Yeah. I'm not rowdy. And I'm in the street. Like, I'm not black or Spanish, so it ain't like they got beef with me. It ain't like I, I, I robbed somebody or I did something to somebody's family. So you was, so so I'm, was, I'm, I'm, so you was at ease. In my head, I'm at ease. But it was still nerve-wracking. Of course. Because I don't know these dudes, and they all looking at all of us, the dudes that came in, mm -hmm. like we were food. Where I was at, it wasn't on no racist shit, though. They had the black TV, the Spanish TV, the sports TV. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't racist. Like, when I used to get my tray, I used to sit down wherever I wanted to sit down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't racist up here in right. Brooklyn. Right. So, being I didn't turn myself in, and that they're shipping me to Kentucky, because you got to... You gotta, Discharge from your destination. Right. Like I couldn't do the 12 months in Brooklyn. Right. I have to go to Kentucky no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I watched the whole room flip twice. I'm there six months. The longest I should have been there was 90 days. So I watched the whole room flip. And now they booked me. I'm getting up out of here. Getting up out of there was some real shit because I never experienced that either. This. That Con Air shit? That, did you take the flight? No. That Con Air shit is real. That shit is real. The security that they got on that motherfucker, that's like Fort Knox. They got to take me to Oklahoma. Oklahoma is like what we would say 
Grand Central Station, 42nd mm -hmm. Street, all the trains going yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Oklahoma. Did Were, were you in Oklahoma at all? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma was the cleanest place I ever been. Mm -hmm. Like they said, it was the Four Seasons with better towels. Spotless. So you but, went to the jail there? I went to no, no jail. That was fucking prison. Mm -hmm. But 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 it's it's everybody's waiting to go to their destination there. I got we, you. we ain't we ain't sitting. Yeah, designated. Yeah. I'm there 28 days there. Then you get travel. And then I'm going to my destination. From there, they flew me to Atlanta. But while I'm in Oklahoma, I'm watching. I get my tray. First day there. I get my tray. I go sit down. Mexican he do comes to me. He don't press me, but he just lets me know, like, uh, you can't sit here. No problem. I get up. I go sit down somewhere else. So this black kid, Chris, comes over to me and talks to me. He's like, yo, where you from? I tell him where I'm from. I give him the rundown. He gave me the rundown on him. So two days later, I'm sitting down. Dude comes, sits with, with me. It ain't child time or nothing. He just sits with me. I peep it already. He got a Bible in his hand, so I already know he ain't threatening. Right? But I, I wasn't aggressive, but I was defensive. You know, I don't know money. So he sits down. When he sits down with the Bible, I already peep. All right, he's harmless. That's what I tell myself. He was like, what's up? I said, what's up? He was like, yo, where you from? I said, I'm from New York. He was like, yeah, I could tell. You don't move like these other white guys in here. He was like, you know me? It's like, nah, I don't know you. I said, you know my brother? Nah, I don't know you, brother. He said, you know who Big Meech is? I know of Big Meech, BMF, I know of him. Nah, but I don't know him. He's like, I'm Terry, Southwest T. I was like, what's up, yo? He was like, what's up? He was telling me how much money he was worth, his case, him and his brother didn't talk. He was like, yo, I'm worth 275 million. I use the whole globe as my playground. I'm telling you, it ain't worth it. Mm. That's what Southwest T sat and told me. He don't know me from a can of paint. Mm. He sat there and told me, yo. That was some real. That was some real shit. He said, if they open the door, I'll supersize people's french fries. I took 30 on the chin without a fight. Me and my brother. Yeah, I ain't know. Hey, hey, get some G to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we sat down and we chopped so it up and shit. When, when you came home? I came home February 18th, 2011. Uh, how long have you been home since? I've been home since, yeah. And what you been doing? i just been mostly with my family, like my mom, my young daughter. Family. Yeah, my daughter's 17. Okay. So I just Working? stay. She works, yeah, she works in the... Uh, you, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, can, I keep a job. Yeah, yeah I've, been, I, I've been working for... When I came home, it was when I came home, it felt fucked up. I am working now, but the people that were on my phone weren't answering my calls like if I was a pariah. Right. You understand? Right. When it was all good just yeah, a week but, ago. Yeah, that's just what happens. That's what happens when you go, you know, when you go to jail, you, you realize who your real friends are. Right. Right. And that, that, that shit had me sick. You know what I'm saying? Me and my wife was going through it. I was living there because I need a residence. Right. But me and I was going through it. I wasn't staying. So I ended up getting a job permanently, and I'm still there to this day. I at still work job. at the same job. Got great shit, I got great relationships with everybody I work with. I got great relationships with my kids. I got great relationships with my ex-wife and the young lady who has my other daughter. Yeah. I got great relationships with everybody. That's good. That's because good. I've evolved. I'm, I'm, I'm a man now. I'm not a little boy. Mm -hmm. I'm not 19. Right. The shit that I did was when I was 19. Yeah. I thought I shouldn't have never experienced the feds. I'll right. be honest with you. Right. That was a bullshit thing. Yeah, but you know, it was something that you it, you did it. It was done. It was learning experience. Oh, absolutely. And that's it. You, you know, absolutely. Got it, and you be able to tell people, you know, look how easy it is to go to, to the fed. It's it's a, crazy. Listen, it's just you one know? decision away, dude. Exactly. Everybody out here chasing the bag. Everybody out here chasing the bag. Let me explain something, honestly. Your self success will never exceed your self development. No mm -hmm. matter how you try and cheat. Mm -hmm. Your self-development is the most important Absolutely. than any dollar you could ever put in your pocket. And I learned that from a dude in jail named John Dorley. Okay? He mm -hmm. he 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 put that jewel in my head. The same way Terry put that jewel That's in my how head. They, do it. Like, like they should. It's all about self-development. That's right. 
not self wealth. You'll get there. So, so let me ask you a question yeah. about no, yeah. what you think about prison reform. You uh, think, you know, I know you ain't here been in jail a long time, right? But you know, the, you know, as far as like being needed, like things that are that we could develop the the the, 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 the thing that we got. The, I think they need new prison. The, I think they need more programs. Yeah, so I, I believe that program, right? absolutely more programs because there's no way a dude with twenty pounds of weed should be a celly with a rape with a with a serial rapist or a serial killer or whatever. Like those two should never meet. They should they should be different classifications. They say that they are, but I don't believe it. It's just a mixed jungle, dude. Yeah. To be honest with you, that's just like throwing dice. You land wherever you land. I got you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I think they need to keep. People's safety first. Mm. In my eyes. Yeah. In my eyes. Yeah, I get it. Like I said, there's no way somebody do something and it's his first time and he's he's they in there with a stone cold murder. murderer. I got right. You. you know what I'm saying? I think there needs to be new training. Where where I went, the treatment was different. When I was in Brooklyn, it was straight ghetto uh COs. Yeah. Ghetto. Like I yeah, see yeah, her in the club. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I went to Atlanta, when I went to Oklahoma, they more or less was on some militant, but polite. They let you know that that's their house and that you're going to comply. But they got out the way. They didn't bother you. In Atlanta, when I was in a, they, they took me to Atlanta to a private prison. That shit was like nothing. The CEOs were definitely untrained. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I went to my camp, they stood out the way. The police just let you do what you had to do unless right. something happened. Like, I literally did my bid without talking to the police at all when yeah. I was in my camp. Yeah, you had to, you had to be around. During reception yeah. and when I got uh, dismissed, when I left. That's the only time I had any contact or talked to the police at all. You In a camp, you could literally just do your yeah. thing. Okay. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's crazy. So, well, I mean, that's through, what's a camp. Through, through that journey, I'm blessed to be where I'm at. That's what you I'm you saying. understand? I'm you blessed. Hear, what would you tell uh, any young brothers out there, Lord's man, you know, that, that they can't find their way and they, and they need some guidance and all that? It just only takes one decision. One decision to throw it all away. Just think. I would try and practice foresight. You understand? Honestly. Mm -hmm. It might sound easy, but I would try to practice foresight because at the end of the day, it only takes one decision. One decision, you can throw it all away. But on the flip side of that coin, one decision can turn your whole life around for the best also. That's right. You understand? That's right. And with That's that, the flip side. We leave it like that, man. Box, man, it was an honor, man. Yo, appreciate it, man. man. You already know, man. Nice meeting you. Know me? Y'all is in the building. Box, you already know. You already know. Dog in the yard. What up? You already know. It's your boy, Pistol Pete. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard. First and foremost, I want to thank you, Box, for coming through. Yonkers, you already know. You got a good brother there, real one. Uh, appreciate you coming through. I see how you, you know, I, how you open up and all that. Appreciate how you know. I mean, every man has feelings, brother. You know what I'm saying? Never got to be ashamed of how you really feel, especially with those that was there for you and you feel like you probably even hurt them in any kind of way. You know what I'm saying? So I salute you, man. Keep doing your thing, Box. It's your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the yard.